Hello, APU graduate students. I hope you are well and coping with the latest ups and downs of our new normal. I am convinced that the course I am offering this fall addresses this change and its effects upon our favorite subjects, literature and writing. In this short video, I'm gonna give you four reasons why you should consider joining me in English 550 World Literature Representing Disability, which will meet virtually between 420 and 720 on Thursdays. First, I have an acronym for these four reasons, R-E-V-E, or -E -E, REV, relevance, employability, value, and expertise. First, relevance. This course is highly relevant to our lives today. According to the latest U.S. Department of Health and Welfare Census, one out of five Americans, or approximately 20%, are disabled. Worldwide, this count is at 15% or a little bit over 1 billion. TABS, or Temporary Able-Bodied, is the label that disability activists have given the non-disabled. This stresses our ultimate vulnerability. Now, vulnerability has been a contentious word for people with disabilities and with disability activists. But scholars in various disciplines, including our own, have hailed vulnerability and interdependency as the new normal for humankind. In the current pandemic, we have encountered such vulnerability, maybe on a personal level. We are all vulnerable, some more than others, the experts say. But in any case, our isolation under stay-at-home orders throws the breach of interdependency into highlight. Christians have long discovered sustenance and hope through the act of the kenosis of Jesus Christ, his self-emptying upon the cross. Christian scholars and theologians in this area have been particularly innovative in addressing past abuses. Unfortunately, as you may know, disability is sometimes interpreted, or at least in the church history, as a consequence of sin. The stories and the novels in this course all address vulnerability and interdependency as central to human nature. The theoretical texts provide excellent frameworks for evaluating and integrating faith with our interpretation of these stories. The conversations between the secular and non-secular approaches will help you become conversant with multiple points of view and solidify your own. Secondly, employability i.e. your employability, <laughs> okay. Second, disability studies is a highly growing and popular field. It's concern for advocacy, diversity, and its suitability for integration with other disciplines makes it a powerful recommendation and a compelling field of study. Knowledge of, or perhaps even specialty in this field will increase your viability and visibility as a future educator, scholar, writer, or whether you're going to go into the nonprofit or profit sectors. Last year, I had the pleasure of sharing the first APU English Department MA program, Thesis in Disability Studies. Ariel Ryan Williams wrote her thesis on the representation of disability by uh, several female science fiction writers. There are many exciting theses to be had. <laughs> okay, so in, ter in terms of employability, I also want uh, to remind you that Ariel's thesis was done in conjunction with another class she took through our program with Dr. Sarah Adams. And this also is to stress the fact that the reason disability studies is such a good sell for you and it's such an interesting field is that it's highly interdisciplinary. And in fact, when I consulted the various programs around the nation for, you know, hey, why should people take disability studies? Because in general, and this is true, not just of disability studies, but of any, um, any specialty, for those of you who are going on to higher education, having more than one discipline behind you is, is, a, is a huge sell. Says the University of Washington, Disability studies has the greatest impact when taken up with another pursuit, academic or professional. For doctoral students, an interdisciplinary student, uh, an, excuse me, an interdisciplinary approach increases the odds of landing an academic appointment, since there are few professorships in disability studies alone. But that is true also of 
a major in literature in any field of traditional fields such as Shakespeare, uh, American literature, British literature, the novel, 19th century, so on and so forth. When you combine it with the contemporary fields such as disability studies, you're a very, you have a very um, appealing range. Third, I want to talk about value. Why would you take this course if the readings weren't just outstanding? They're, it's very important that they're engaging, and I promise you they are. Basically, they expand upon the idea of global relevance. I'm sure you've heard of a curious incident of the dog in night nighttime, or maybe Oedipus Rex and perhaps Octavia Butler's The Parable of the Sower. These are diverse genres, plays, novels, and some, in some cases, memoirs. But I want to include also a couple of books you probably haven't read, including this great book entitled Flights by Olga Tugarza, which was the 2019 Man Booker International Prize winner. They are the kind of books that haunt you in a good way. They make you grow intellectually and emotionally. And if you're interested, read the attached syllabus to see more details. I have selected these titles, some in translation, because this is a course in world literature and not just in disability studies. And let me make that clear. Recently, especially in Emily Apter's 2013 book against world literature, the issue of exactly what world literature is has come to the fore. For instance, she argues that there is such a thing called the politics of untranslatability. In other words, it may be um, the wrong assumption to think that we can go into a country, choose its best or quote unquote greatest literature and thereby distill the very essence of a nation. She takes that into account, but she says this idea of course traces back to Goethe's idea of world literature. And so we're going to be looking at how our concept of world literature developed in the first place. We'll never stray very far away from, however, are situating this in the study of disability. For instance, we have to look at disability in the intersectionality of your identity as a person of a particular country, a person of a race, a person of a gender, and ultimately someone who's part of a global context. So lastly, I want to talk about the last E in REV, which is expertise. This is a subject I am knowledgeable and passionate about. In 2017, I published Moving Toward Redemption, the spirituality and disability in the late writings of Andre de Buse, who was a Catholic writer. I spent the notable spring of 2020 uh, writing and researching my new book, Capable Vulnerability. So representing disability is not just about political advocacy, um, practical theology, or ethical mission, which are all good things. It's also about our favorite subject, the opportunity to dig deep into the ways that literary devices, narratology, and aesthetic concerns, such as what is beautiful, what is true, function to convey not only what can never be conveyed, let's say it's an attempt, it's an attempt at the inevitable, it's an attempt at limit, but also truths about how human beings employ imagination in capable, creative, and spiritual ways. Thanks for listening. There's still time to register. If you have any questions, email me. Thanks, bye.